Hello everybody. Today we will be discussing about one more case where uh, drugs and kidney uh, on, uh, on a topic on drugs and kidney. So in this particular case, he is a already a known case in patient of uh, diabetic kidney disease. He is a diabetic since uh, almost 7 to 8 years. He has been on medications for diabetes. But he presented with acute kidney injury, acute renal failure. So the presentation was he developed pedal edema, facial puffiness over a period of 15 to 20 days and then uh, he was he had to be he was oligonevric when he presented and he also had pulmonary edema. So at that point of time he was admitted and then he was uh, initiated on dialysis, he was offloaded and then he was we did a renal biopsy for this particular patient. So renal biopsy showed acute interstitial nephritis. So the thing what I would like to discuss with this patient is that the important thing in the history what is that he presented he started taking alternative medications about seven to eight days prior to the onset of symptoms this is what uh, by taking history what we got to know so the alternative medications what he took were unknown so these were the alternative medications which he used for his diabetic control although he was very well controlled on diabetes but he took few alternative medications so from that point of onwards he started about 7 to 8 days from that point on from that day onwards started developing symptoms. So history here is very important to know the cause of kidney disease. So probably these were the medications which caused acute interstitial nephritis in him and that was the cause for his renal failure. He was uh, stopped on uh, the medications were stopped and then after that he was started on steroids. Now at this point of time 7 days uh, almost 7 to 8 days the last dialysis he is having good urine output. Today we are planning to dialyze and then remove his dialysis catheter. So this is what we are planning to do. Apart from this one more important drug NSAIDs and that is painkillers are one of the important cause of renal failure. See he also had history of intake of NSAIDs. So whether NSAIDs were the cause or alternative medications were the cause we cannot differentiate. But here even history of NSAID intake is present. So NSAIDs are one particular class of drug which is important. It can cause renal dysfunction in many possible ways. As far as we know when we go back to our basics, the cause for renal dysfunction when we enumerate during our MBBS days are pre-renal, renal and post-renal. Right? In renal, in intrinsic renal, the causes of kidney disease could be either glomerular, tubular and interstitial. So when we differentiate the cause of renal failure, we differentiate into pre-renal, intrinsic renal, post-renal and in the intrinsic renal, glomerular, tubular and interstitial. So NSAID is a class of drug which can cause renal failure in all the possible ways. It can cause pre-renal dysfunction because it, it inhibits prostaglandins, decreases renal blood flow, renal glomerular blood flow. And by decreasing renal glomerular blood flow, it can cause acute kidney injury, pre-renal acute kidney injury. In the intrinsic compartment, NSAIDs are known to cause glomerular damage. NSAIDs can cause uh, minimal change disease like picture. They can cause FSGS like picture. So they can cause damage to the glomerulus. NSAIDs can cause acute tubular necrosis. They can cause acute tubular necrosis. NSAIDs can cause acute interstitial nephritis. So in the intrinsic compartment, all the compartments can be involved. In the post-renal, NSAIDs can cause papillary necrosis causing obstruction. So in this way, NSAIDs are one class of drug which can cause renal failure in many possible ways. Even one single dose of NSAIDs can cause renal dysfunction. So at the primary care practice level, we have to make sure we do not prescribe inadvertently NSAIDs and avoid NSAIDs in whom uh, in those patients who are at very high risk of renal failure, especially those who already have renal dysfunction, or if they have uh, if they are diabetics or if they have a family history of renal failure. So this particular patient tells us how intake of NSAIDs also intake of alternative medications in him. He is perfectly all right now. He is improved but and he is having good urine output over a period of time but the thing is we could catch the cause very soon very early so that is how one more uh, best part in this particular patient was 
he presented in an acute renal failure. What happens sometimes, the drugs what they are taking can cause renal failure over a period of time. That they can cause chronic interstitial nephritis and then that can cause, that can lead to CKD. So, luckily, it was good that he presented in acute renal failure, not in a chronic renal dysfunction. It is something which is reversible. And his renal biopsy doesn't show any chronicity at all except some diabetic nephropathic changes. So, what we have learned from this, inadvertent use of NSAIDs should be avoided and how NSAIDs can present, uh, can cause renal failure in many possible uh, ways that we have come to know and by this we need to know that at a primary care practitioner level we have to use NSAIDs very judiciously and not on each and every patient with some kind of pain uh, we should not use NSAIDs. Also what we have learnt was unnecessary use of alternative medicines even this we have to make sure every patient understands this and the way we got a history of alternative medication was on a repeated questioning. So, taking a proper history and a meticulous history is very important when we have to find the cause of a renal failure. So, by just doing dialysis is not the end, we have to find the cause of renal failure, dialyzed the patient, did a renal biopsy, got the histopathology, history gave us few leads what, what, what could be the cause of renal failure. What are the possible ways in which they can cause renal failure we have got to know. So, in this way we have come to know in what way NSTDs can cause renal failure and how they should be avoided at the primary care practitioner level. Thank you.